<laughs> I was like, if you, oh, wait a minute. Did you? Oh, girl, I am so sorry. Y'all, see, I, I told y'all I'm new to this. Oh my God, let me let you in. My bad. Okay, okay, okay. I'm so sorry, Kyla. <laughs> Look at me. I did it. I pressed the button. We did hey. It. Uh, Hold on. Wait, I was about to say I can't hear you, but I, I can't hear you. As soon as I... Chewy, it's okay. Come on. Goodbye. Hasta la vista. You're letting the dog back in the house. I did. <laughs> oh, and it sounds like he trying to come back out. You want to come out? All right, come on. All right, he's out. Okay. Well, welcome, okay. Kyla. <laughs> That sound like a big dog. What kind of dog is it? He is. Come on. I think we. I think the male is here. One sec, y'all. I'm gonna. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, good God, that dog sound like whoop. That dog got big bark. <laughs> he is big though. He is a. He's like a lab mix. He's probably about sixty or seventy pounds though. So he's a big. He's Sheesh. a big dog. <laughs> oh, I love big dogs. I love them for other people, but like. For me, ownership wise, nah, I need something I can grab and go. Grab but, and go. Uh, ATL girl, thank you for the gift. I do love a big dog. Um, okay, Kyla. Well, welcome. Thank you for agreeing to go live. I appreciate it. I'm gonna let you give your own introduction because yeah. you will do it justice way better than I will. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Kyla, uh, half of Kyla and Alex. My husband and I are full-time uh, travelers from Texas. We quit our nine to five jobs back in May, literally a week after our wedding. <laughs> we got married a week later, quit our jobs. And a week after that, we hopped on a plane uh, to the other side of the world. So we've been full-time travelers since May of this year. We've been to four countries so far. Uh, right now, we're currently in New Zealand. I'll show a nice little view because I am sitting. Oh, wow. Oh, that's so gorgeous. Yeah, we're hanging out here in New Zealand. Um, and then we have plans. I'm going to move the camera back. We have plans for country number five later this month to be in Vietnam. And Bianca's already given us great advice about Vietnam. Oh, my God. Vietnam is this month? Yeah, it's this month. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. Thank you. It's wild. Like it came so freaking fast. But yeah, we our goal is kind of like to show travelers, especially Americans, um, that travel kind of like you guys. Travel doesn't have to be super expensive, mm -hmm. um, and that there, you know, if you can consider an unconventional way of life that this lifestyle is possible because it is what what we're doing is unconventional and you have to kind of think a little outside of the box to yeah. make this lifestyle happen but yeah right now we're currently living off of our savings um but yeah that's kind of who we are and what we're about and uh that's us <laughs> in a nutshell um, yes um fun fact kyla and our kyla and i met on tiktok so yes. Um, yes, we literally met through live. This is why, this is why, listen, I know social media has a dark side. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't, but I really just love the fact that on like social media, you can just meet, I can move this down now on social media. You can just meet so many dope people. Like I've met so many incredible humans online. So, um, and I just love, I just love that you're in New Zealand because that is just like, <laughs> New Zealand, I feel like it's like another planet. Like I like, used like to, yeah. I used to think Asia was another planet. And then whenever me and my husband were in Thailand, we were like, honestly, like, we were like, you know. But when you when you start talking like New Zealand, Australia, I'm like, oh baby, that is, that's way over there. So. Um, very very excited to hear more about new zealand and kyla was kind enough to prepare some questions for us to go through so um kyla you can feel free to take it away anybody who is in the who is watching feel free to drop any questions that you have and we will answer to our best ability but otherwise let's get it let's get it popping kyla i got you so actually i have my kind husband dropping the question in the chat <laughs> oh yes we love it listen we, we love Right. Listen, we love these husbands helping out. Okay. Yes. Yes. My husband about to be my husband about to be behind me cooking dinner while I'm on this live. Like this is, 
listen, travel tip, get you get you a partner that helps, okay? A travel <laughs> partner, yes. Because I would say, it doesn't even have to be husband. You could be like mother, daughter, travel team. It could be sisters, travel team, best friend, travel team. It could be a random person, y'all. It's, it's, people out there, it's people out there who are looking for people to travel with. Like, yep. literally, like Kyla said, I think you put it so beautifully whenever you said, um, whenever you said, oh, let me pin this. Uh, why won't it let me pin it? Okay, that's weird. I can't pin it. It doesn't give me the option. Oh no. Okay, hold that's on. That's so weird. That's Comment weird. settings. No, that's not that. Yeah. I, so this is my first time doing a join live. Does it let you pin it? No. That's so weird. Copy I, wonder, mm -hmm. I wonder if it's because there's two of us. It's you, which that's okay. We'll just we'll work. We'll go with it. Yeah, we'll go with it. <laughs> so I will. Way. I will ask you the question first, then since I can see it now. Okay, that works. Um, right. yeah, go for it. I'm blabbing. Go for it. I got some questions for Bianca, and she can um, look. Like, feel free to elaborate. But you guys probably want to know these questions too. I put them. I crafted them because I was like, I want to know this about Bianca as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's a great I, I really like this question too um yeah how did you get your partner your husband on board to travel so fun fact we are we actually thought we were going to be living in florida right now um listen all all prayers to florida i, I know y'all going through it right now um we thought we were going to be living in florida right now and for my birthday last year, I ended up taking a trip to Europe. So I did Germany, France, and Netherlands. And I was in France, in Paris, in Petty, and I was doing a tour. It was called Exploring Black Paris. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to the guy who was leading the tour and he was like, he was like half American, half Jamaican. And we were basically just talking about living abroad. And we were talking about, you know, just like the state of things in the US and how like abroad, like our mental health is just so much better, blah, blah, blah. Um, fun fact for you guys who don't know, I, I actually lived abroad for four months back in 2019. So I've already had a taste of this lifestyle and I knew it was something I wanted to do again, but I just never really had the official plans to do it. So I messaged my husband, this, I leave, he was at work and like and my husband used to work in a prison. So we literally couldn't even have his phone. So while we would like message on Facebook. So I remember sending him a message on Facebook and I was like, babe, I think we should consider moving abroad instead of moving to Florida. <laughs> and he goes like, babe, what? Like all cats. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, can we leave it open? And then he was like, okay, we can leave it open. And I was like, done. I was like, if you tell me I can leave it open, oh, it's over. It's, it's over. All I need is a little, just give me a little bit. And I'm on the computer searching all the different ways. Yes. Like, I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So um, long story short, we had multiple conversations and I, it actually was not as hard to get him on board as I thought it was. And my husband is not American. So let me put that out there. So my husband is already, um, He's already he already doesn't really have like the American mindset like he wasn't born in the US. So like it's not it wasn't that hard for him to conceive living outside of the country. And then we started looking at rent prices in Florida and we were like, <laughs> I'm Question, sorry, what? what city were you considering in Florida? We were considering Tampa and St. Pete. Mm, gotcha. Yeah, and it was looking like and at the time we were in a three story, three bedroom, three and a half bathroom home, like townhome. So we were going to have to and we were already prepared to go to an apartment. We were not prepared to go to an apartment and be paying minimum twenty five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And since, you know, he the one paying the rent, he was like, he was like very, very on board. So, um, yeah, we we ended up traveling with remote year. I've talked about remote year on my page a few times. Um, we ended up traveling with remote year for the first couple of months. And this this is how I did it. I was like, I was like, we'll test it out and see how we like it. In my head, I'm like, we're yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pack up, move all of our shit in the storage for a month, and then come back. No, in my head, I was like, it's gonna be longer than a month. But I basically positioned it as let's try it out and let's see how we like it. And yeah, the rest is history. I love that. <laughs> so you guys tell it, tell your partner to just try it out. Like to just try it out. It's like yeah, you, 
Well, yeah, trial like, run. So Kyla, what about you? How did you get your partner on board? So actually it's kind of similar to you in the sense that our plan was to move to Alaska. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Y'all so like we, the cold. We like the cold. And like, okay, so okay. About, but you're from Texas. We're from, yeah. So I was born in Seattle, but I okay. live like 20, 20 plus years in Texas. Okay. So we're both, I'm basically Texan. My husband born and raised in Texas. And so we both were like, you know what, let's try something dif different. So once we got engaged, um, actually we were talking about marriage. We were talking about marriage and like, okay, well, if we get married, where do you want to be? And we had landed on Anchorage, Alaska. So, you know, in our head, we're like, we're going to Anchorage, we're going to Anchorage, everything we're doing preparing for Alaska. Um, to make a long story short, my dad passed away and that opened our eyes of like, time is valuable. Like we don't know when we're going to, you know, Alaska on earth. We don't know yeah. if we'll be able to live to retirement age. And so we're like, if we go to Alaska now, we aren't close to stuff. Like we might not have the opportunity to go travel, um, you know, cause so far. So yeah. that's when we pivoted and decided. So we were already going to, yes, ATL girl. And like, so it's literally that, that mindset of like my dad passing away was a tragic situation. <laughs> But it literally opened my mind. <laughs> it, it like it opened our eyes up to be like, you know what? Maybe we should do this now. Life and we were already gonna leave. We we're gonna leave Texas regardless. <laughs> so it's like either we go up to Alaska and not see family, or we go to the other side of the world and not see family. Yeah. So yeah. that was our thing. We we pivoted and uh, he got on board because he was like, I'll go anywhere you go. <laughs> that that was like truly that. <laughs> That truly is it. It's like, you know, it doesn't really matter where we are. It's like, we just want to, want to be together. And we didn't live together beforehand. So like, we're like, we don't really care where we go as long yeah. as we're together. So yeah, um, that was, that was our story. It was really like opening our eyes after the death and then realizing that Anchorage will, Alaska will always be there. Like that's yeah. the thing, right? The U S will always be there. We already know how to do U S culture really well, no matter what state you go to. Uh -oh. Yeah. Is it buffering? No, you're good. Okay, on my end, it's, it was buffering. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that, that's what we did. <laughs> I had no idea that we had such similar stories. Yeah. So I, it's funny, I think we are gonna learn a lot about each other on this live as well. Um, I'm older, I started traveling at 15 for a school trip and I was like, yes, see, yes, period, yep. ATO girl, yep. period. <laughs> yes, 100%. Um, it's, it's interesting because, and I think you can probably relate to this too, Kyla, like it's one of those things where you know, you don't want to be like telling other people like how to live their life or telling them what to do. Um, but, you know, you do hear these people say like, oh, I'm going to travel whenever I retire or like, oh, yeah, I'm going to travel when, you know, after I do this. And, um, you know, it's, it's a very real thing, like just, you know, recognizing that life is fleeting. And like I relate like my um, my father passed in 2022 and it's a, it's a very it's a very eye opening thing. And even whenever I was in Europe last year, y'all like, don't laugh at me. When I was in Europe last year, I remember, and like, I, I consider myself, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, listen, I'm thick. I ain't skinny by any means, mm -hmm. but like, I'm a healthy girl. Mm -hmm. When I told y'all whenever I was in Europe and the three girls I was traveling with, like, I was having a hard time keeping up with them. And like, mm -hmm. y'all, that shit is humbling. I feel like when you get to age like 28, you really start to see like, oh, okay, okay, like I'm for real getting older. Then you hit 30 and you're like, you're like, you know, you're not old, but it really is like, oh, it's just gonna keep going up and yeah, it's yeah. not gonna slow down. And you start having like these bodily changes and it's yeah. kind of freaky because like, you're like, I still got like 70 fucking years of yeah. life. Like, why am I already deteriorating? Yeah, my knee, I hear a pop in my knee when I'm walking the dog sometimes. I'm like, I didn't have this pop. Like, I played tennis my whole life. I'm like, I don't remember this pop playing that's tennis, what I'm saying. guys. That, that's what I'm saying. And so like, whenever I was on that trip, you know, it was dawning on me. It, it dawned on me. I was like, I was like, I'm only, I'm only 31 years old and I can already feel, you know, myself getting older. And so, you know, when I hear all these people say like, oh, I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to travel like after I retire, I'm like, baby, 
First of all, you better hope you got the energy after you retire. And don't get me wrong, I think it's beautiful whenever I see like older people, older couples out here seeing the world. I know, listen, I know me and my man, we gonna be seeing the world for the rest of our lives. Exactly. Um, a gondola in Venice. <laughs> exactly. But like, I just, I just think that it's a completely different travel experience when you do this, when you truly, when you're in like a physical body that like, y'all, some of the shit we've done this year, you think I can... <laughs> Wow. I'm, I'm I'm laughing because some of the things I've done this year, I'm, and you wait when you get to Vietnam and you do like Ninbin and you're climbing up like 500 steps, or when you are in Bali like trekking in an AT. Like there are some experiences you want to do them when you are more able bodied. I will just put it I will just put it that way. And then you know back to Kyla's point, life is short. You just don't know how much time you have. And at the end of the day, you know different strokes for different folks. But I know that for me. Um, it really came down to, you know, God forbid, like if something happened and I was going to be, I found out I was going to be gone tomorrow. It's like, you got to ask yourself, what would you regret? Like, what would you regret not doing? And for me, I was like, I was born and raised in North Carolina. I need to get the hell out of here. Like, I need to get the hell out of this country and see the world. So anyway, let me quit blabbing. Let me like highlight, go see the next question. Yeah, so you guys are ready. Hold on. I, I'm like signaling my husband. I'm like, I love, I just love the hand signal. Thank y'all so much for all the hearts. I appreciate Thank you guys it. For, yes, I was like, we love it. We love it. I will say one thing I forgot to mention that my dad passed away literally three months before his retirement. So that, that really, mm -hmm. that really was like, he had this plan. He had this, if you think about it, we all, everyone in the retirement has these plans yeah. of what you're going to do. My dad had, you know, this plan. he actually wanted to get a, um, a second house in florida that was his little thing like he wants a little summer what do you call it like a condo like you yeah. said like a little condo in florida and then he had two destinations cayman islands and dubai so to think about that my, my husband my husband oh my gosh my father whoa was 64 years old and passed away three months before his retirement that really was an eye-opener like you said we everyone says they're going to do all these things in retirement but we really take for granted will we actually live to that age like yeah. you know no, nothing is promised but oh yeah. thank you, alex he put the next question so question number two for bianca is how did you and your husband meet me and mel met online like very cliche millennials <laughs> we um <laughs> we met online back in 2016 before this is like before everybody was admitting they were online dating mm -hmm. this is like just when you were only telling your close friends you weren't telling everybody like we used to talk about lying about how we met for like the first year that we were together and then we were like you know whatever but yeah we actually met online mel slid in my dms and i um i thought i thought he was a catfish and huh? i thought he was a thirst trap and i was like I, so I used to do this thing back when I was online dating. Let me just preface all this by saying I am a Libra, y'all. So I am very, um, I'll say charming for lack of a better word. And also like, I just like, it's not even like flirting, but I just like banter. Like I just like having like fun conversations with people. So sometimes I would just like entertain men on, the, even if I wasn't interested, sometimes I would just like humor myself and I'll just be like, yeah, let me write back to this ridiculous line. And so he had reached out to me. He would just say something simple, like, you know, Hey, how are you? Or something like that. And I looked at his profile. He had one photo, one photo. His shirt, <laughs> his shirt was, I was like, look, I was like, oh, thirst trap, look, catfish. And yeah, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna just message him back just because I just want to talk shit. I was like, I'm not even, yeah. And then obviously I ended up being pleasantly surprised. I mean, it turned out that he's just, he actually just created that profile. That's like fair. he had a profile for like 24 hours and then he met me. Wow. You're gonna yeah. be shocked, Bianca. Oh my God, Are we, we might be living double lives over here. <laughs> I, you guys, like Bianca tell me, never, tell me. never met before. I like so we're friends on TikTok. We're from completely different states. We're completely different countries. So my husband and I also met online. And I probably had my profile for about 24 to 48 hours. Wow. So, he's the only, I, I've only, let me, let me back up. He is the only person I ever, what am I? I only got on the app once. I'm trying to say, I only got on the app once 
and he's the only person I met. Like I, I talked to a couple people wow. in that day and then I talked to him and then we met in person and then I got off the app. <laughs> So, so basically like, you were my husband because that yeah, is pretty much. yeah, yeah like wow. the exact same thing. Yeah, meanwhile, he was the ninth guy I met in person. Yeah, he had a lot of uh toads. He had to go through a lot, he had to kiss a couple toads before girl, he did. Girl, <laughs> look back, like what a life, what a life I was living back then. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Now I'm now I'm now I'm an old married lady. But yeah. Misha said that would be me. I'm scared of online dating. I mean, we're two success stories over here in completely different states. Yes, like, yes, we are. It's true. Um I do now well, Kyla, you're more recent than me. When what year did you guys meet online? 2021. Okay, cool. I was gonna say yeah. The, I feel like since mine was 2016, like I guess that it was it was a little different back then because everybody wasn't on it. Mm -hmm. I feel like now I, I hear some crazy things about online dating apps. And I fun fact, I, I actually like to write online dating. Apps. I think it's really fun because I'm kind of nerdy like that. And like I'd be seeing some of the stuff that people be putting up there and I'd be like, I'd be y'all. I'm sorry, men. I'm sorry. men. <laughs> I could probably get rich. I should stop what I'm doing and I should just become a professional online dating profile writer because like y'all need thing. help. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like that's a thing. But you know what? I feel like if the profile is bad, does that mean the person is bad? Like it is doesn't. It, okay, that's fair. It I mean, but 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 we live in a society where online dating, you're not gonna get that chance. I mean, like I said, y'all, we with me and Mel, it was just it literally because I was just like, I'm gonna just have fun and flirt with him real quick. I'm just gonna like it was I never thought that it would have gone anywhere. And you know, mm -hmm. most people, you know, it's it's swipe left or swipe right. And I mean, I think there's some men where and I think it's not just men, of course. Um, typically means they lazy, not bad. I agree. I do agree with that. And I think that and I think that's the other that's thing, good. you know. I don't know how this is not escalated to online dating, but from two married women, but <laughs> we got, yeah, our, our approach is completely crazy, but that's yeah, what we got. Like, I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, it's like you get out what you put into it, right? Like you got to think about what and who you want to attract. And I think, you know, like you said, a lot of people are just lazy and they just don't try. And then they like, oh, it doesn't work. Or, you know, I, I attracted all these weirdos and I think you will attract some weirdos regardless because that's just that's just online. I mean, I yeah. you attract weirdos on TikTok. So like it's just yeah. ATL girl said too many toes and frogs swimming around out here. <laughs> girl, you gotta get that scuba gear. Okay. Yes, there you, go. you gotta get that scuba gear. <laughs> you gotta go lower. You gotta go deeper. You gotta go deep. That's that's fair. Yep. That's oh, cool. Wait, you ready for question three? I'm ready. All right, my love, question three. All Thank right, you, five. Alex. Because I put the questions in my phone and then I forgot that I'm going live. So like, I can't see the questions. I, I did this. I literally did the same thing. I was like, oh, I can pull it up. No, you can't, Bianca. You can't pull up WhatsApp while you're on the phone. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm like, or was it got to go deeper? <laughs> You know what? I think you got to go deeper or you got to just float atop and just wait for it to you got to just be you got to just get in your own zone. You got to just focus on you and trust that like serendipity will happen. I'll get real. All these posts is a question. I'll get semi spiritual. So I was like, you know, work with me, people, if you're not spiritual. Um, in my single in my single season, I was single for like 10 years. Like I just wasn't dating. And in that time, I was living my best single life. Like literally y'all, I literally, and anyway, but a lot of times people are always looking for the right partner and no, and not being the right partner. And like, yeah. that's really important. Cause like, oh, well, I need the man to be six two and he needs to make six figures yeah. and he needs to be athletic and he needs to do this, this and that. And it's like, okay, that's cool. But like, what are you doing? Like, have you worked on your, your childhood trauma? Because if you get in an argument with this man, are you going to blow up at him? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, have you worked on that? Are you, have you worked on, you know, daddy issues, mommy issues? Yes. Like cooking, cooking is cool. Like you learn, anyone can learn how to cook, but like, can you regulate your emotions? Um, mm -hmm. Mm. You budget of, or manage your budget like that's really big like everyone thinks about oh well my man's gonna make all the money that's great so I used to work 
I used to work for a brokerage firm, and you guys have no idea how often the woman would call after her husband died and she had no idea what to do. Like, that's so sad that, you know, we have women 50, 60, 70 years old whose husbands did everything. They knew nothing about the finances. And they're like, you know, having to start over, especially, you know, back then, our grandparents' age they got married really, really young. So, you yeah. know, this is like a woman who probably from like 19, 20 on never thought about money. And now she's forced to think about money. So, like, back to that, like, being the right person, yeah. <laughs> being yeah. a good person, being not good, being, being, the qualities of a good partner because when you have those qualities i feel like you tend to attract um yeah. like like um oh my gosh i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking yeah. <laughs> like yeah. your head gonna hurt sw swiveling like just just center yourself but anyway that was my little thing thank you alex no. for the next question no yes, i love i know i love that mate arrives i love that you said well i'm, I'm like i'm literally like behind on the oops oh, there we go. Really learn to love your life yes yeah. yes yes I love that. And I think also um, there was something, no, there was something you said that I was going to piggyback on when you were talking about all the things. Um, if you're thinking, whenever you are thinking about all the things that you want in a partner, you know, ask yourself, what type of person does that partner need? And then yep. ask yourself if you are that person. And yep. if you're not, then, you know, you can work towards being that person. Or if you decide that you, you know, don't want to, that's, that's your business as well but i think so much of so much of it is like being willing to be vulnerable and i think that it's very unfortunate that we live in a time where everything is like shouting at us to be the opposite of vulnerable and everybody everybody wants to act like they don't care but everybody mm -hmm. wants someone to openly show that they care about them and it's just yeah it ain't gonna get you what you want but it yeah we work. need to we can <laughs> We apparently we need to we need to do a whole other live on that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah, like we could. I didn't know I was an, a relationship expert because I've literally been in one as an adult, but apparently I have some sort of wisdom there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there's we should do that at another time. I like that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alex's question. What so Bianca? What would you say if your partner doesn't want to travel to someone whose partner may not be on board? I would say leave them behind. So it makes, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not gonna lie to you, Kyla. I'm gonna let you take this one first because I'm I'm toxic. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, shoot, I might be toxic too because I would say you do have to kind of think about. And I know, like, there are people out there who've been in long-term relationships, and then they thought, "Oh my gosh, you know, I just this movement of full-time travel is fairly new, right? Like, this is a new phenomenon that is becoming more popular." And I'm not going to I'm not going to tell someone to leave their partner after 10 years. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I won't say fair. that, but I would say um, I would. OK, number one, because I'm an advocate for therapy. I'm an advocate for therapy. You guys, I would say if it's something you really want to do and they're not on board with it, uh, actually, let me back up from therapy. Number one, take a long trip. Like kind of like we're saying testing. Like together. You yeah, mean. like take a long testing trip and do, and I know this could be hard, right? It is, it is, it's hard, like hard to do a month off, but maybe like two weeks, like bulk all your vacation time in one and do like two weeks, but do it like if you were living in a country. So I'm not saying don't go stay in an all-inclusive because that's not going right. to be what, we don't, neither one of us live in all-inclusive resorts. <laughs> we don't, not you hard. know, like, like we do Airbnbs and, and stuff like that. So it's like, yeah, maybe go to a destination, stay in an Airbnb and do life as if you were um, living in that country. And if the partner, husband or wife, right? Boyfriend, girlfriend, because it does it. A lot of times it is the men, but sometimes it is the women, right? The women might. So either person, I was saying test it out, right? And if they like it, you know, be like, hey, let's 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 see how it can work. Uh, the other thing I was do is like present as much information as possible. Like make it because it sounds scary, right? Like it's like what kind of like what you said with your husband? Like he's like what? But you have to present stuff. Um, and I, you have to present, you know, like maybe start watching YouTube videos of other couples doing it and getting. I prefer to see the real culture and people versus. Thank you. Yes, like yes. go see. Like to do that because um, a lot of times our vacation, when you take a vacation work, 
You do. Like you go sit, you go sit at the Marriott, you go, <laughs> you know, you, you, go, go, you get that. drunk with other Americans. Yeah. And yes. And you hang out with other Americans and it's like, um, that's not what we do. We're not, neither one of us and a lot of people who are doing this lifestyle, we aren't just hanging out <laughs> on a Tuesday. We're not going excursions o'clock. every day. <laughs> yeah, like that gets expensive real quick, you guys. Um, so that would be my suggestion is number one, test it. Actually, back up. Number one, do as much research and kind of get them on board. Like eat, sleep, breathe this full-time travel lifestyle. Like when y'all watching TV, like pull up a YouTube channel of like Brian and Carrie or like Grounded Life Travel. Like I'm just thinking all these people, you know, pull pull up that and that make that your your nightly thing. And then, for, and also I would say, if you people look like you, don't look like you, it don't matter. <laughs> Just show two people or any two people. That's number one. Number two, test it out. And then number three, if you really, <laughs> it doesn't work, I would then consider therapy, like to see where the disconnect is, because maybe a therapist can find something that you don't, you aren't thinking about. Cause they could just say, no, no, no. And you're like saying, yes, yes, yes. Well, y'all need to come to a compromise. And number four, kind of where you're going, leave them. I was like, if you, <sighs> not leave them as a person but maybe start a side hustle and like have your own little pool of money and then that pool of money is what you're doing to go travel for a month at a time and you go you make a solo trip because it's totally fine to to um to travel alone it's it's (laughs) it's okay like like partners need their space and you do that too but yeah that's that's my little advice (laughs) yeah no no i love that um Joanne said she is getting ready to leave for Thailand for a month. That is so exciting. What part of Thailand are you going to? You're going to love. You're going to love Thailand. Oh my God. The just, oh, I get jealous every time I hear somebody say they're going to Thailand. I have to be like, (laughs) Bianca, stop. (laughs) Like, stop, Bianca. We Um, both love it, y'all. We, we are, both of us are obsessed with Thailand. Like, uh, Bianca had said this before. She said, if Thailand wasn't so hot, and I feel the same way, I think because we're both from the South, if it wasn't so much like the South, weather wise, I think I would live there too. Like, I would make it a place. Yeah. Oh, wow. Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Cambodia, Vietnam. Joanne, let's get it. Yes, I love that. You are going to love all of this. Um, I would have, I'm, I'm so glad you're going to Chiang Rai because I really wish that I would have and I didn't. Um, mm-hmm. And Cambodia. Um, yeah. it's just, it's hard when you go to Southeast Asia, y'all. Cause you just, you want to go, you need a year. Like you, you, really you need, do. cause you need at least three months in Thailand. Like yep. I'm, I was there for nine weeks and it was not enough. <laughs> like yep. you need like yep. three months, but no, um, you're gonna, you're gonna have an amazing time. All, all of those places. We're so excited for you. Oh my gosh. You have to come back and let us know your favorite, favorite city and country. Cause you're going to and three favorite countries. Food. And favorite food. Oh, yes, definitely. Because I'm invested. I'm always invested in Southeast Asian food. So, mm-hmm. yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely, Joanne. No, um, Kyla, I know that I, I really love the answers that you gave. Um, your number four was like my number one. But, like, <laughs> but you know, when I say that, I'm kind of kidding. I'm not saying, <clears throat> I'm not saying like you ask your partner, like, hey, are you willing to travel? And they go, no, and you're like, hey, bye. I'm not bye. saying like, I want to eat my way through Thailand. ATL girl, I literally told my husband that every year we should do like a foodie Asian thing where we literally go to Asia with the intention of just eating our way through Thailand and Vietnam. Like we're we're already talking about making this like an annual thing. Maybe we should make it an anniversary thing. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a plug up here. Um, husband wants to move there. I said, let's visit first. See? Joanne, and what? How timely? How timely for you to be talking about this? Um, I definitely love the idea of, and I did want to ask Kyla. So it says, "What do you do if your partner doesn't want to travel?" So do you mean was the question like travel long term? So I meant long term, like if they want, if they don't okay. want to do long term travel, but if it's like if they just don't want to go with you, then yeah, I'm with you. Like see you, because I mean, you know, you. That's kind of how I took it. Yeah, don't work the same job, so y'all can have different vacation days, and um, I mean, you gotta figure out something to do with the kids. So that's the thing. You might have to figure something else with your if you have kids. If he's not gonna watch the kids, then you might have to take the kids somewhere else, and then oh yeah, if you have like kids possible. or like pets. That's a whole other yeah. yeah, that's a whole other ball game. But um, yeah, I think in general, 
if they like if they don't want to travel anywhere, like if they don't even really want to take like a, a shorter trip, um, go without them. Like, you know, and you know, and you can come back and tell them about your experiences and hopefully that will inspire them. And if it gets to a point where they're just like, no, I don't want to, then, you know, I think you just really have to ask yourself, are you okay with getting to the end of your years and realizing that because of someone else, you didn't see the world. So, <clears throat> and that's, that's a personal decision that you have to make. Yeah. I think that's also what the therapy, right? Um, if it's, a, even if it's short term, like if y'all have exhausted all your options and you are unsatisfied with the answer, then, and they're not willing to budge and they're not willing to talk about it, then yeah. I mean, everyone loves to pay for everything, love to get matching shirts and love to get really cute china and like love to do all this stuff. But like, what about investment, like $150 an hour on a therapist or yeah. loves buying a really nice car, like cars cost 50 grand now, right? Like I think a Toyota RAV4 is like almost 40 something thousand dollars. You know what I mean? Like I'm laughing because I have a RAV4. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the RAV4. What do, we had a RAV4 here for a month. So I'm like, I was sticker shocked because I haven't bought a car in a couple of years. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're 40 grand now. Like I remember 40 oh. grand being Audi. Like I was like, that's my head. Nah. <laughs> a $40,000 car is. But anyway, with that being said, it's like. Yes, Joanne like, also got a RAV4. <laughs> yes. Listen, Toyotas are legit. I think my next car, like when we move back to, I have a Jeep now. It's at, at the house, you know, back in the States. But I think my next car is going to be a Toyota because uh, they last forever and I'm, I'm all for a forever car. But everyone likes to buy everything else, right? Like they have to buy everything else for their marriage and invest in a lot of consumeristic stuff, but don't want to invest in the person that they're with. And that's where, that's where I was kind of going back to is um, buying all the things to fix the problems, but like you still got the problem and you might need to talk to somebody yeah. if you don't want to have resentment towards your partner about traveling alone. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, my husband and I started doing, well, he was my boyfriend back then. We started doing relationship coaching back in 2018. And <laughs> Our That's relationship bad. coach was the one who married us in yes. 2022. So yeah, yeah I think just in was... general, I don't know how this this has turned into relationship advice and not travel. Like, I mean, it, it's, but that's what we, we literally did um, pre-engagement counseling. Yeah. Before we got engaged, we did a counseling and then we did premarital counseling. So like you saying mm -hmm. that y'all did counseling as uh, um, before you got engaged, like all your dating is years wow. before we got engaged. Yeah. yeah. That's so, you guys, that's crazy. Like we, I feel like we do. We, we're gonna have to do a little relationship. Well, I'm a solo traveler most of the time and love it. Listen, I'm a, I'm a good solo traveler too. I love a good solo, solo travel. Solo travel is nice. People, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've solo traveled, but never underestimate how amazing it is to not have to ask anybody's opinion on anything ever on a trip yep. it is the most oh my god like i be telling mm -hmm. people like don't get me wrong y'all i love my man i love my man but sometimes mm -hmm. i don't want to be like what's the dinner move i don't mm -hmm. want to be like what do you want to do like i just want to not have to think about it and it is uh, it's it really is amazing like i'm that person like even sometimes when i travel with my friends they're like, oh, what flight are you taking? I'd be like, girl, I can meet you there. We, we don't even got to be on the same flight. Nope. Honestly, I don't even need to have to have like the small talk in the airport. Like I am happy to meet you there. Like don't sleep on solo travel. It's And it's so empowering as well. I agree. Yeah. And, you, and you meet amazing people. I agree yeah. to that. I feel like people approach you when you're by yourself a lot yeah. more than when you're with someone especially if you're with a guy because a guy can be a little intimidating um but yeah as a woman by yourself it can be good and bad but yeah you are approached more but you could have more opportunity for positive interactions that's where i was going with that agreed yeah so are you ready for question number four i yeah. am okay number four please he's getting it for us y'all and we appreciate it Okay, whoops. And thank y'all for the hearts. Please keep the double yes, tap coming. Is that we appreciate it. Thank you guys. What's your, oh, there you go. What is your favorite country, Bianca? Mexico. Really, why Mexico? Oh my God. Mexico, <laughs> because, because Mexico is the place where every time I go there, I literally feel like I'm at home. 
Like mm. I just, I as soon as I land in Mexico, my spirit just lifts. Like I, I love Mexican people. I love Mexican food. I will also admit, and I rem- this is something that um, I've been in marketing for a long time, y'all. So I can get like really nerdy around like data and stuff. But like this is, I've recently recognized that. I say my two favorite countries are Mexico and Thailand and full transparency. Those are also the countries where I've been to the most amount of places, if that makes sense. Like I went to like Bangkok, Thailand, Thailand, no Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket, Krabi, Chiang Mai. I went to five different places in Thailand and I've been to like six or seven different places in Mexico. ATL girl, we we just on the same wave. We are just we just been on the same wave all night. Um, so I do kind of feel like I am a little biased in terms of, um, and I'm sure Kyla that you can relate to this. Like the more time you spend in a place, the more time you have to fall in love with the place, the more time you have to appreciate a place. Um, but Mexico is my favorite country. Um, even before like I started traveling, like even before like this year when I've been to like nine countries. But yeah, I just I I I just love I just feel like I just love Mexico. I really do. Like it's just you have the Caribbean, you have the beautiful waters. Mexico City is so dope, just amazing food, so many people. There are actually a lot of like black expats there as well. I just I just I love I love Mexico. Um, I feel like Mexico is like my, my like American girly, like favorite place. And then I feel like Thailand is my like global girly mindset place. Does that make sense? Yeah. What's your favorite city in Mexico then? Girl, I can't, I I can't choose. Don't ask me. If you talk to one and someone said, I'm going to Mexico, I can only pick one city because I got like four days. Where are you telling them to go? Kyla, don't. Did yep. I tell you I'm a Libra? Don't be trying to make me make these decisions. <laughs> if you just like, oh my god, tough, you're just like, you know what? Well, just just go to the city, and then you can go to other ones later. But but check out this city first. Can I please do two? <laughs> y'all, do y'all want her to do two? So let her let us know if she's allowed to do two. Here's this is literally what I always tell people. And anytime they ask me about somewhere to go, I always say, "What type of trip do you want to have?" Because, um, thank you, ATL. She gave me two. I appreciate it. Okay, okay. you get two. <laughs> okay, so if I get two, I would say Mexico City. Like, if you want to do like a city vibe, I would say Mexico City is just it's just such a cool place like there's so much culture there like i said the food scene the party scene it's just yeah i lived in mexico city for five weeks and it was it was phenomenal um yeah and if i had to choose like if the second place would probably be the second place would probably be it would probably be cancun and i really hate to be that cliche but like Cancun is beautiful and it's and I remember like talking to Mexican people in Cancun and I'm like is Cancun really a real place like it's it's like a you know I'm like in there and there there is a cultural side to Cancun I I will be very very transparent and say I have not seen it when I go to Cancun (laughs) I'm going to party but I just I I love Cancun it's it's just so beautiful there and it's just so fun there I mean, I me mean, personally, if you really want to experience Mexican culture, I wouldn't choose Cancun. But if you want to take like a quick trip, solo trip, girls trip, vacation, Cancun, I feel like Cancun can give you everything, right? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe except the culture. But, except, but, yeah. as far as, <laughs> but as far as like having like a really fun trip, I feel like you if you go to Cancun, you're going to get that. But if you really want more of like the city vibe, I would say Mexico City. I like that. I feel that. Can you hear me better? Does it sound okay? Yeah, you sound good. Okay, okay, cool. I switched the mic. I love that. Okay, so Mexico City slash Cancun yes. would be the top cities for you. I've never been to Mexico City. I have been to Cancun, and I absolutely love Cancun. Um, yeah. Fun little fact, one of, you know, because we try to slow travel, like we try to spend a month in a city or a country, and we are still open to the idea, but back when I was planning, I literally was looking into, like, Aldo Carmen area. 
because I really like there's a really big like I said expat community American expat community there and yeah. I'm still open to it like I they just opened that airport in Tulum um right yes. they open it after I after I, left. I know <laughs> like they open it after we're all way on the other side of the world but I'm I'm very I'm very intrigued and I I'm half mad about it because I know this is just going to bring more tourists. I'm always so, I'm always like, I love infrastructure. I'm all for infrastructure, but then also I'm biased because I'm like, yeah. but then it means everybody's going to be there, but I'm a tourist yeah. too. So it is what it is. I um, feel that. I feel that so much. I was like, I feel, I feel the same way. My country is actually Thailand, I was going to say. Oh yeah, I, I was about to ask you, what is your favorite country? I'm getting my laptop charger, but I'm still here. I love, love, love Thailand. Um, I've been three times now, uh, once on a girl's trip, and then the second time with my husband. And then I went back in July because I cracked my crown <laughs> in my tooth a week before we left Thailand. And so I got the impression made and then I had to fly back from Auckland to, to Bangkok to get my tooth fixed, which by the way was $400, you guys. It was only 400 bucks for everything. So absolutely amazing. Like medical tourism in Thailand is elite. Did have to yeah, mention that. I've heard, I did not know you've been to Thailand three times. Yeah. And I realized that it, it feels, it doesn't feel like it, but every time I go, kind of like how you feel, it feels comfortable. It feels familiar to me. But at the same time, Bangkok does not all, but Bangkok feels yeah. familiar. But at the same time, Bangkok is like New York City. Like every time you go, you have a completely different experience experience yeah. you, you can't do everything in one trip in bangkok just like you can't do everything in one trip when you go to new york city i mean the populations are similar they both have about 10 million people there so if you think about the size of a city with 10 million people yeah um as a yes as literally i i even here in new zealand new zealand's um because it's it's you know a first world country mm, to, uh, what was I say? Dental work is really expensive here in New Zealand, and it was going to cost it was going to cost me more to get my tooth fixed here in New Zealand than to buy a plane ticket to Thailand, get my tooth fixed, stay in Thailand. I think I stayed there for like four days in July, ate my food, bought a, bought some sneakers, and came back, and it was still cheaper. Wow. And we thought we considered that uh, ATL girl was like, should I just wait because it was a week. Should I just wait and get my tooth fixed here? And no, because it was, I think it's gonna be like two grand here in New Zealand mm -hmm. versus wow. $400 uh, there. But yeah, I, I love Thailand. Thailand's the first, my husband and I uh, say that Thailand feels like home for us because that's the first place that we had together. Because yeah, yeah we, we stayed in a hotel for our wedding, which is not ours. And then we went to my mom's house after the wedding, which is not ours. <laughs> So Thailand was truly like we stayed in the Airbnb for the month. That was yeah. truly like our place. And Thailand's cheap. I think what people find afford or people Americans Western world finds appealing about Thailand is you can live a life of luxury on a budget. Yeah, and we love that. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, like, but yeah, that was that's my that's my number one. It Man. might change, but that's my number one. Let me know if it does, because I'll honestly, you know. Thailand, I mean, like I said, if it, I mean, it's, it's honestly, like I said, it, I almost feel like Thailand and Mexico are like tied for me just because they're, they're just two completely different yeah. experiences. Like I said, I don't, I don't go, I don't necessarily go to, to Mexico to do the same things I go to Thailand to do, if that makes sense. So yes, agreed. it, it yeah, doesn't really that. feel like apples to apples. Um, mm -hmm. it, what's your favorite city in Thailand? I like Bangkok. Damn. I really do. Krabby Damn. was cool too, uh, yeah. but Bangkok has more to do. Like you are never bored in Bangkok. I feel mm -hmm. like I could get bored in Krabby. Yeah, no, no, mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. Um, me mm -hmm. and my husband thought we were going to stay in Bangkok for five days and we ended up staying there for six weeks. So, oh, whoa. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, so Thailand was the like maybe fourth or fifth country that we went to mm -hmm. this year. Brazil, Spain, Bali. Maybe it was the fourth. Either way, Thailand was the only country other than Colombia that we went to this year where we were there for less than 24 hours and we were like, we can see ourselves living here. Like wow. it's just and I and I and I tell people, and I know Kyla, maybe you can relate. Like I would tell people that, excuse me, of course I can always tell you things I like about a country. I could be like, oh, the food is good and it's affordable, mm -hmm. but it's like 
I think something that a lot of travel creators don't talk about is like the feeling that you get in certain places. Like sometimes you get to a place and like, you're like, oh, this is cute. It's fun. I like it. And then sometimes you get to a place and you're like, okay, whatever. This was cool. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. I'm okay to leave. And then sometimes you get to a place and you just feel like it, like it feels like home. And yep. that to me, Mex like Mexico, Thailand and Colombia, like okay. out of the 28 countries I've been to, those are the ones that have truly felt like home. Colombia is on my list as well as where's Panama and Belize. Oh, I want to go to Belize. I was in Panama last month. Like you, um, she was just in Panama. I was in Panama in August, yeah. but um, you will love, I think you'll love all three, honestly. I want to go to Belize. Have you been to Belize, Kyla? I've not been to Belize. It's Me on the either. list. Me too. I love it. Should we, what are we on? Question. Five. Next question, please. Thank we you. liked Panama ATL, girl. Um, I liked Panama more than my husband did. Panama is expensive, and we didn't know that until we got there. So um, do your research. I like Panama for a week-long trip. Like, I like Panama for, like, one to two weeks. I don't I don't love Panama for long-term living, um, or at, at least unless it's... Um, if it's um oh my god i was about to say if you're older because there is a there's a lot of like black expats there but they're like all retirement age mm. so that kind of shocked us we were like oh everyone's twice our age <laughs> or older <laughs> so um but we did meet a lot of like younger people but they were just like coming through panama so like panama is, it's a it's a fun place but like i said for me it's more of like a place that you go for like a week it's not necessarily a place that you stay unless you're retiring that's how we felt about it Mm, that was good. That's good to, to think about. So yes, it's costly. I'm old. That works for me. <laughs> okay, well then, hey, <laughs> then you you will have plenty of You'd company. You love it. Do you have recommendations for Mexico and where to stay? Ooh, um, good question. Is it Tamales? I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right. What part of Mexico are you going to? I mean, and when you say where to stay, do you mean like the neighborhood or the Airbnb? Um, yeah, I think it depends on which part of Mexico you're going to, but I'm, let me, let's start there. I'll let you answer that and then we'll take it one step at a time. Uh, we can go to number five, Kyla. What's your least favorite country, Kyla? Least favorite, oh, that's a good question. Oh, can we, I'll, okay, can we just change the question slightly? Instead yes. of saying our least favorite country, can we say, what is a country that you've been to that you don't need to go back? Like you okay. don't like you don't feel a pull to go back. You're like, you know what? I went there, I did it, I'm good. That's a good one, because then I have an answer and I would say Belgium. Really? Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. So I my first solo trip actually was to Belgium. Um there was an airline a couple years ago, they're defunct. Um, but it's kind of like the equivalent to like a European spirit, and they would run like these ninety nine dollar fares from What was the airline? I think now it's, it used to be something else, but it, now it's play. Okay, never mind. Yeah, but they like bought, I got, I have to look at find the old like ticket or something. I was gonna but, say, was it like Nordic or something? But before the, maybe, but yeah, I had a stopover in Iceland. Okay. So that would make sense if, if it was a Nordic airline. But yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but they had, they would run these 90, kind of like how Norse Air does now. They'll run these $99 fares to Europe. And I pulled a, I got a $99 ticket from Chicago to Brussels. And I went to Brussels for a couple of days, solo trip. And here's the thing, Brussels is nice. Like people were nice. I had, you know, great chocolate, great fritz, the fries. Um, but I think I felt like I did everything I needed to do in that country. I felt there wasn't a lot that I would have appreciated. And so if I never go back to Belgium, you know, I won't be sad. If I never go back to Thailand, I'll be extremely sad. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that that's my country. Belgium, I been there, done that, you know, got the got the stamp. So we're good. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? No, I I love that comparison of like, you know, you have your countries that if you never went back to, you're like, okay. And you have your countries where you're like, no, I know I need to go back here, like Thailand. Um, hold on. Thinking about going with husband and two kids, 19 and 21, not sure which part of Mexico, maybe a hotel or resort. Oh, I would just do like Cancun then. Like if you're if you're doing like your whole family, Cancun, like all inclusive all inclusive resorts are going to be really easy. 
um, in my opinion. I don't have a recommendation because I've stayed in two different resorts in Cancun and the first one was boring and the second one was wild and not family appropriate. So yeah. I unfortunately do not have a recommendation <laughs> for you. Um, but I know that there are a lot on this app. Like it's a very like popular place. So I'm sure if you look it up that you can find one. Sorry, I couldn't be more helpful. I was, I've only been to Cancun, love Cancun. And if your kids are older, they'll love Cancun too. Cause yeah. at 18, did you do a resort they, Kyla in Cancun? We stayed at like a Marriott, not a, not a resort, just like a okay. courtyard or something. But yeah. Okay. And then okay. went to the, went to the town. Got it. Um, Cancun resorts can be good. Yes. Yes, they can. They yeah. will be good for you. I, um, resorts are my least favorite way to travel. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't mean that every once in a while, I don't appreciate a resort vacation. Same. Like when I mean, I took my husband to Cabo at a resort for his birthday last year. And I was like, it was, it was perfect because I didn't want to plan a bunch of shit. I just wanted to show up. I wanted to look at whales. I wanted to be on the water. <laughs> and that is exactly what we did. So in general, I'm like, you know, Kyla, more of like slow travel, but sometimes, sometimes a resort is solid. I would like to visit a cenote. Yeah, Cancun or Tulum are great yeah, for, yeah. Cenote. for cenotes. Cenotes are so yep. dope. Me too. It works for family. Yeah. And I think especially for a family and, and resorts are nice because a lot of times they already have stuff to do. So you yeah. don't have to worry about trying to plan a bunch of stuff. So I think for a family trip, that's a great, that's a great plan. And the food too. Food's already there because everyone, yeah. you got, you got four adults with four different tastes in food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, as yeah. far as a country that I've been to that I do not need to revisit, I have a few, but the first one that came to my mind was Chile. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, um, I was in Chile for like three weeks, three and a half weeks back in 2019. And it's funny to say that because Chile was my was my first country in terms of an introduction to slow travel. Chile mm -hmm. was the first place I ever stayed at for more than a week. Um, and, and I will always appreciate it just for like what it was. I met my Spanish teacher there. Like I, I, I have like amazing memories there. But when I look back, I can't think of anything that there was like mm. nothing there that I can't even I can't even really tell y'all like a Chilean food like to be honest oh, with you interesting. Um, yeah and it doesn't and I mean in Santiago is cool like uh, Santiago is like a really it's a cool place to see but I don't feel like there's anything I missed or anything I need to do again personally mm, that's fair I feel that yeah I haven't um, been to Italy have you Kyla I've never been to Italy sorry yeah. I have no <laughs> I'm not opposed to Italy and I'm not going to everyone's experience is different as a African American or black traveler. Um, so I would just say do your research and just because someone says this is any country. But yeah, there's a lot of people on these apps that say Italy is horrible for black people. They're so racist and blah, blah, blah. Um, but then there's also a lot of black people who live like in um, what's the island? Cat, ca, ca, not know. Catalina. There's an island next to I can't remember you guys, you guys have to tell me. But anyway, Sicily, there's a lot of black wow. people that live in, there's an expat community in Sicily. And obviously if there are people there that they've had, a, they have a positive experience in Italy. That's what I'm trying to, it, there are black people in Sicily who are American and they have found their home there. So obviously <laughs> they love it. So yeah, I uh, wanna go try it out. Definitely try it out because yeah. everyone's experience is completely different. Yeah, we might go there and we might hate it or love it. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. We're we're honestly on the same wave. I always tell mm -hmm. people, I was like, I will always be honest about my experience in a country, but I will always tell you, you should go see it for yourself because yep. there are so many factors that come right. into play in terms of like the experience that you have in a country. You might have just got mm -hmm. in an argument with your man or your best friend or, you know, whatever. You might be having a bad hair day. It might have like rain. Like even like I was in Spain for a day and I always, I'm like, I don't even like when people ask me about Madrid because I was like, look, it was cold, it was rainy. Me and my husband yeah. have been traveling for like 48 hours. We mm -hmm. saw like this much. I'm like, I can't give you Madrid opinions. I just, I can't do it. Um, and yeah, there's just so many things that go into a travel experience and like, I understand why black people ask questions like, you know, did you feel safe here? Or like, where can I go? But I, I just feel like 
if you're living in the United States, I don't know what you're scared of because yeah, that's, like, that's where you're going to be treated the worst. Yep. <laughs> if you want to be, I'm like, if you want to be honest, you're going to be treated the worst as a black person in the United States of America. In the like, US. You're scared to go to Italy because, yep. you know, you're going to walk in a restaurant and, you know, they might like ignore you. But I'm like, bro, you might get shot for no reason in the United States. So. Yep. Yeah, I, I say take it with a grain of salt. Italy is not really on my list for a lot of different reasons, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't mean I'll never go. Like, it's one of those things where if an opportunity presented itself and it made sense, like, financially yep. and, like, based on calendar, like, I would go. But hey. it's but it's, it's not in my, like, oh, my God, I have to go here list personally. Yeah, not a top 10 country for me either. The yeah. reason I would do Italy, and this is for personal is one of those repositioning cruises to get back to the states a lot of them what? start oh okay so a lot of so cruises will when the end of the season they'll you know they'll move the ship from one continent to another and a lot of times the ships are really inexpensive because if you think about it, right like how many americans can take off for two weeks and go from you know the u.s to europe or europe to the u.s See, exactly. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> so, okay, so I'm about to put y'all on real quick. Repositioning Please. cruises are when the cruise needs to, like, okay, I'll give a really good example. Right now, it's hurricane season in um, the U.S., so a lot of ships, you know, have moved over to Europe or vice versa. Are they getting, actually, that's not a good example. Um, a lot of ships right now in Europe are getting ready to come back to the US because it's about to get cold in like London and Italy and Spain. So they're gonna move them over to Florida in like November. Well, people in Europe, same thing. They may not necessarily have the time off to come over to the US because then you gotta fly back to Europe, but they sell these trips, they sell these bookings and they'll have a couple of stops along the way. So for example, it'll, it'll start in Italy, in Rome, and it might do Rome, and then it'll uh, go down to like Portugal and they'll do one of the islands like like uh, Madeira or the Canary Islands. And then it'll do like mm -hmm. one more island in the Caribbean and then it'll stop in Florida or it'll stop in New York, depending on the so they're repositioning. Because when do people like to cruise again in the winter? During Christmas. And they mm -hmm. like to go down the Caribbean. So, yeah, they do that on both con both sides of the world because they also do it from Australia and New Zealand back over to the u.s and those ships usually are the ships that do the alaska in the in the summer so right Tell now me what, they're called, what kind of cruises repositioning so they reposition the, the ship so it's called a reposition cruise uh yeah rep like there's repositioning cruises so like if you're on royal caribbean's website you can see like uh bahama cruises Europe cruises, uh, Hawaii cruises, and some of them will say repositioning Girl, cruises. you better stop, Kyla. <laughs> yeah, and that's well, a I good a way to, book. yeah, to get back over to the states instead of flying over. You could, because some of them, especially Royal, you guys, Royal and Princess, you can get an interior cabin on some of these for like eight or nine hundred dollars a person. Well, that's almost the cost of a ticket if you really think about it. Yeah. And then you can ease your way back over. You don't have as much jet lag because you're not flying eight hours or 10 hours mm -hmm. over. You're slowly uh, readjusting each day. And in your budget, yes, and Atlantic, I'll say RC for sure. Royal Caribbean is really big on this. Princess, and I've never been on a Royal Caribbean cruise before. Uh, I've done one. But I like the bigger ships. I would say stick to a bigger ship. OK. And so Ooh, did you say these cruises are normally like two weeks? Yeah, it's usually okay. somewhere from 12, usually reposition the shortest time is 12 days, like, because okay. it takes a minute, but yeah. anywhere from 12 to 17, 18, depending on the destination. Ooh, then, I don't know if I can do an 18 day cruise. <laughs> I, I love the water. Well, wait a minute. Do you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to turn this into like a cruise chat, but no. um, <laughs> do you know if like for any of the islands, do they stay overnight or no? It depends on the ship, right? Like every okay. ship is different. Every and you can pick, like you can pick the itinerary, the cru the cruise line. I will say, like, because I've been looking at them when we're coming back to the states, so we're looking yeah. like the poly you know, uh, Pacific Ocean, and a lot of them stop in the Polynesian islands, and some of them do have overnights in like French Polynesia or Tahiti yeah. or Fiji. So they're I'm definitely. <laughs> I know, especially if they do overnight, because like I do, I do love a cruise. 
Um, the longest cruise I've done is six nights. I mean, honestly, I think I could probably do like eight nights and be like good. I Pizza. think once I get to like past 12, I would be a little like I, I would want like more time on the ground at some point. Mm -hmm. So I think if, if I can find some overnight options, girl, stop playing. Because after we go to South Africa, <laughs> after we go to South Africa in December, I might be we might be flying to Europe. <laughs> hey, like I said, you, you you guys would be surprised. Like, and it's really like it's really people do it. Um, I will say this: I follow a lot of retiree travelers because there's not a lot of people our age doing yeah. the things that we're doing. I mean, it's becoming more. It's becoming more popular. But um, a lot of the people I follow are retirees, and I'm learning from them because this is what they're doing when they're yeah. trying to move position position continents they're getting because if you think about it like who has time to do these ships it's yeah. going to be retired yeah yeah that's fair and, and tamales yes they are marketing it as a repositioning cruise like it's it's marketed as, as that Ooh, i love that I, thank you kyla you're very welcome i lost our turn were we on a, we were on a question and i lost the question no oh. i thought we were doing um i thought we were doing um What's your least favorite country? We were done with that. I think we're on number six now. Number six? Okay, hold on. Alex, number six, please. Me and my old friends be traveling, y'all. I'm here for it, ATL girl. Listen, get it in how you get it in. I love a good cruise. I do. Yes. I, I love yes. the water so much. Like, I, I, I probably could do a 12 day, honestly. Um, I would just need to like set expectations because normally a cruise for me is strictly vacation. Like, I don't work at all. So, like, I would just need to kind of like think about like, Okay, am I going on a 12 day vacation or like, or am I gonna be like yep. trying to get some, look, my work for that cruise is just gonna be going live every day. I'm like, that'll be yeah. my work. <laughs> People and I'm people do that like and it's like I said because once again it, it's not really I guess it's not a vacation it's like a method of travel yeah it's like you could take an Amtrak train across the country which that yeah. takes a couple days or you could take a cruise across the world and that takes a couple days yeah have you done a cruise to Tokyo I didn't even know that there were cruises to Tokyo yes. I've never done a cruise to Tokyo, but there are cruises, the repositioning cruise, it starts in like LA. Oh, I was going to say from where? Yeah, from you can go from LA over to Tokyo and it re, it's repositioning the ship so that the ship is in Asia for the season. That's so dope. That is mm -hmm. so dope. Okay. Thank you, Alex. He said, okay, great question. Bianca, what steps did you take to prepare you guys to officially leave the United States? I always tell people that it was easier for us to leave the US than it was for us to move like in the same city to like a different house. Mm. Um, I think that whenever you are going to leave the US, you're in a completely different mindset. You're not thinking about the furniture and like you're not thinking about all this stuff you're going to carry. You're really just thinking like, what do I really need? What's going to make my travel living abroad experience as seamless as possible so okay. honestly the most we did prepare I mean, we got a storage unit i mean of course i mean whether you're packing up to if you're moving next door or if you're moving out of the country you're, of course you're going to do all the packing stuff um we didn't even save a lot of money on we honestly like we we just we paid for our room and board in brazil and then we paid for our flight to vietnam because those were our first two countries and then um Oh my God, I feel like we didn't do anything. Like I can't even, I can't even <laughs> like think of anything crazy. So I mean, your so house, definitely did you sell your stuff. house? Did, you were said you what? renting? I was saying your house, did you sell your house? Were you renting? Is Girl, it we were renting and our lease was up. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like it it truly did, it just, it just worked out. Like there really was not, there really was not a lot for us to do. Like we were, you know, just asking where we could leave our cars, like figuring out where they were gonna go. You know, of course things like, you know, turning off, like I said, things you would do anyways, like turning off your like light bill, you know, letting people know um, that, you know, you're leaving, like getting in that last minute dental appointment, you know, getting any prescriptions, like just kind of like some tedious adulting stuff. But honestly, there really wasn't anything that crazy for us. What about you, Kyla? Our story is a little hard or easy, I would say, because we were, we got married and then left. So we didn't yeah. have like a lot of things. I, mean, I take it back. We did have a lot of things. We had things at our separate house. I had a storage unit with my apart my stuff from my apartment. We sold like ninety percent of our stuff 
Um, and that's, that's, and I, I will tell people, you don't have to do that. Cause like you can get a storage unit, put everything in your storage unit. That just what's worked for us because we weren't, we didn't have a house. We didn't have, you know, an apartment to be coming from. Um, we prepared ahead of time by saving. We did, we have, we have a savings cause we aren't working at the yeah. moment. So we did prepare by like having a nice nest egg before we, uh, got on the road. Um, I'm trying to think what else we did to prepare. Same thing, like my, my car is at my grandma's house, and so she, you know, she starts it up. <laughs> yeah. Every couple of days, because I'm like, when we get back to the states, it is nice to have a car because now car notes are so expensive. Yeah. Um, trying to think what else, but kind of yeah, what else do we do to prepare? Um, See, I was, it's not as hard as people think it is. Yeah, it really, it like, really is. We're literally isn't. trying to think about what we did because it wasn't that hard. It wasn't. Listen, ATL girl, when you start selling, because here's the thing: I have a very, I am, a, you know, American. We have a love for our stuff. Like I have a, it's unfortunate, right? Like I was really having a hard time getting rid of stuff, but then at some point I was like. Now that I'm here, I mean, I'm four months into journey. I don't miss that dress. I had this a beautiful, be I love fashion. I had all these clothes. I, I was a fashion reseller. So all these clothes that I was sad about selling, I don't even think about now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you really, you forget about the stuff. I had a pink couch. I love that pink couch. I don't think about that pink couch. <laughs> that's how it be. Yeah. That's, so, that's exactly how it be. I'm trying to, yeah, that's really what we did to prepare. Um, what do you do with your mail? Do you get, it goes to my sister's house. Yeah, I was like, it goes. I like, have the, yeah, and I have the informed delivery, so I, I see anything. And like 99% of it, I don't care. X. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, that was, I was like, it's just stuff. Yeah, I was like, it's just stuff, literally. Um, that's a mindset too. It really is. I feel like um, someone said this. I can't remember who says that. When you have so much stuff, you kind of become a slave to your stuff yeah. because you can't move. You you like you can't even move houses if you have too much stuff. Like if yeah. you think about that, you literally get your mind is like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna pack all this stuff? And you're like you said, you're just moving down the street, moving yeah. to another city, moving to another state. So I agree to that. Would you like the next question? Yes, ma'am. Can I have a last question, please? Thank you. Mel, what time are you cooking dinner? Mm-hmm. Oh, you donate <laughs> your stuff twice a year. ATL girl, I have a um like I was a reseller. Have you considered selling your stuff? Um, uh, making extra cash for it? I'll only say that because you'd be surprised what places take. <laughs> um, you would be like Plato's Closet and um What's the other one? Clothes mentor, all Uptown that. Uptown Cheapskate. Uptown Cheapskate. Yes, like you would be really surprised. And if one store doesn't take it, look at another one because demographics in different cities are completely different. Like one Uptown Cheapskate, like caters like the 20, 20 bopper <laughs> crowd, but then the other one, another one might like have a more professional demographic. And so it's the same company, they just have two different demographics. But yeah, that's my mm -hmm. little two cents, especially because you're an ATL. Yeah, like there's a ton. Oh my gosh, there's so many really good reselling shops in, T in, in Atlanta. Oh my goodness. I could talk about that whole other time. All right. <laughs> okay, question. Thank you, Alex. Do you, Bianca, do you guys plan on returning to the US to live? As of right now, we have decided that we will be back and forth. We are not 100% ready to commit to living life in the US full time again. It's very hard to imagine that after being abroad, just because we're so much, our mental health is just so much better abroad. Like we just live a better, like a more simple lifestyle abroad. Um, at the same time, like we both are like really close with our family and friends. And this is why I think I told you when we were kind of going back and forth between Thailand and Colombia, why like I love, love Thailand, but I think Thailand might be, that actually might be something for us like later in life in terms of being there long term. Like right now, like our parents are older. So um, what's really nice about Colombia is like the flight home is pretty, is pretty cheap. So yeah. um, we, we plan on, we as of right now, we plan on being back and forth, but at least for the next year and some change, like we abroad, baby. <laughs> I 
I love that. You guys heard it from her. She said she's abroad for the long term and has no plans to be 100% back. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love that. (laughs) What about you? We're only four months in, and we did have a plan of only being out a year. But as we, you know, as we're out here, we realize that we really like it. You know, like, yes, this was a test, but at the same time, we did know we're going to be here 12 months. We're going to be on the other side of the world 12 months. I don't know. (laughs) Alaska. Yeah, we love, I love, I love Alaska. Alaska will always be there. Um, But I also like the lifestyle out here. Like I said, it's a simpler lifestyle versus being in the U.S. And I already know, like, I already have in this, my mindset, like, can we go back to U.S.? The minute we touch the ground, we're going to be doing this, this, and this. And we're going to go to this. All the things. All the things right there, (laughs) man. And it's like, dang, if I go back, like, it's kind of, that. that's scary, you guys. Like, y'all think moving on the other side of the world is scary? You know what I think is scary? Coming back to the States and, yeah. like, being unsatisfied in in the U.S. Like, that's a scary feeling to me because once you get a taste of it, like, well, now we've gotten a taste of it, we're like, can I go sit back at a desk? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for the next 20 years, you know, like maybe I could do it for a year because I'm saving up for something. But like, can I sit at a desk for 20 years? Um, I don't know, you guys. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a very real thing. That's what it's all about. I want a simple life, good people, good food. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Once you realize how little you need to feel joy, um, yep. like I said, y'all, we were in a three-story townhome, mm-hmm. garage. We had the big cars, garage. We had we had all these stuff and yep. we are happier living out of suitcases. Yep. And you know, like like Kyla said, it's like you you go back and it's just you, you know, you're you're a different person. Mm-hmm. And I know that for me, I really, really tried to not um get back into like the rat race. That was one of the main reasons why I left the US was to get out of the rat race. And I remember after I lived abroad in 2019, like I remember when I came back home, like I really, I tried to keep the mindset that I had abroad and I, I couldn't, like, I just, I couldn't do it. I mean, I just, and I'm not, and I'm trying, I'm not trying to say you shouldn't be the change you want to see in the world because you should. I'm just saying that it's a lot easier to remove yourself and just go into an environment where certain things already exist versus yep. trying to be somewhere and trying to change oh everything God. around mm-hmm. you, which can quickly lead to burnout, resentment, frustration, yep. Yep. and just like all the things. So, yeah, I, I feel, feel that. I love that. I love that. I feel that. But listen, ATL girl, when you get out, you're going to feel a whole. <laughs> you feel so much peace. I was like, literally. We're in two different countries and feel so much peace. And so it's not even like this particular country. I think it's, I think the common denominator is the U.S. Because we're in two different states. We're in two different sides of the world. We both feel the same way. Um, But the common denominator is, like I said, that U.S. grind. But don't worry. I love the U.S. Okay, you guys. I'm born and raised. Like, I have nothing, no hate towards the U.S. Um, The other thing I was going to say is I think when you leave, when even for a short period, you find your people, you find your tribe. Because sometimes I love my family and my friends. Sometimes it's hard to talk about things yeah. abroad or you feel like they just don't understand or you just don't want to not burden them, but you don't want to. Mm-hmm. What's the word I'm looking for? It's hard to relate. It's not they yeah. can't relate. And so when you find like people like meeting Bianca, we've met people here in New Zealand, met people when we were in Thailand who have the same lifestyle. You're just like, oh my gosh, like, you know what it's like. You, 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 know, get, like, it. you, you get it. Yeah, you get it. And that, that's a beautiful feeling um, as well. And that's what I was going to ask you is like, have you guys been like meeting other people? And, I, and that, I think that's the other piece too. It is what you said in the very beginning, Kyla, when you said, if you're willing to do something unconventional and then you start meeting other people and then you realize it's it's a very weird phenomenon because you know that what you're doing is crazy, Correct, but then yeah. you also realize that what you're doing is not that crazy. Mm-hmm. Like you start, you meet, <laughs> like you meet other people who are doing this and you're like, y'all, this is a thing. Yep. You don't have to live that life in the US if you don't yep. want to you can yep. choose a completely different path like the yep. only person stopping you is you 
right? Mm -hmm. Like it may not be peaches and cream to get there. I understand not everybody's <laughs> story is the same, but you know, you won't know until you get out there. And like, and also like Kyla said in the beginning, the US isn't going anywhere. And you know, that's the same thing me and Mel said. We're like, you know, we like, there's so many amazing things about the US, y'all, we are spoiled as hell, okay? Mm -hmm. There are there are a lot of amazing things about the US. Like I don't, I'm never gonna be like, oh, I'll never set foot in this country again. Um, <laughs> but you know, at the same time, you just, you just gotta really think about the life that you wanna live. And like I said, you gotta know that you can try like nothing is permanent i think humans have this we we do this thing where even though we know logically the change is inevitable it's like we del we like delusion ourselves i don't think yep. that, that's not a verb but i made it a verb <laughs> we like we like delude ourselves into thinking that like oh this is impossible and it has to be this way or once i do this i can never turn back yes you can you can you yep. absolutely can you, yes, can you can always change your mind you can always make a different decision like i have heard about people with like families of fours and dogs yep. moving abroad yep. like single mothers away. moving I'll abroad just leave it at that. yep like whole like single mothers single fathers whole families um yeah there's i will say in this day and age there is someone to look out look up to who's already doing it yeah I'm like it's there's no i feel like there's no new dynamic and like you said if you if you really want to do it, there is a way. It may not be as easy as someone else, um, but I definitely think it's possible. And I think when you when you realize that, you're like, dang, I should have <laughs> I should have tried this a long time ago. ATL girl said, it's not crazy. We in the U.S. think other places are difficult and different. Yes, that oh is my god, so true. Yes. <laughs> that's why you gotta travel, y'all. Yeah, that's why that's why you have to travel because it it changes who you are. It changes yep. the way you see the world. I think we, yeah, I was like, we realized that we may have been fed a little Kool-Aid, drunk a little Kool-Aid in the U.S., that we're the best. Mm -hmm. And we're great, but I don't think necessarily, I think other countries are equally as great, too. Kyle is being thing. gentle. I think other countries are way better, but we can make it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, every every country has its, uh, its positive and negative. I, I like to say, like, peace. Like as far as peace, it literally expands your horizon. Yes, there's a global world peace index out there and it has 163 countries listed. So not every single country is on there. And out of the top is like most peaceful to least peaceful. So New Zealand is number four on the list as the most fourth most peaceful country in the world. The U.S., you guys, is not in the top 100. We didn't make the cut, the top was, 100. Girl, if you told me the U.S. was in the bottom 10, I would believe you. I would be it's, like it's like 120 it's real it's low you guys like we're what out, is we're this list called i'm learning from the internet global kinda. here i'll put it in the chat global world peace index like Hold we're the phone. how are you putting something in the chat oh comment i can't do that uh when you host there's like a like three ellipses i think yeah i'm there and then there should be a way to hit comment, but maybe holy yeah. smokes, <laughs> yo, yeah. Kyla, you know more about live than I do. <laughs> I, I was like, I played around with. I've been live for what two weeks now. I was like, <laughs> I won't talk about how long I've been live. <laughs> I don't know. Just a little, but yes, wow. I, I Thank learned you for that. that. Global like, world peace. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and and actually, you can see all the like said. So, all the countries that you've been to, all the countries you want to go to, we're low on the list, you guys. And it kind of goes back to safety. Um, if you can be in the 120th least peaceful country in the world, <laughs> then you there's a hundred other countries that are more peaceful than the U.S. Look, yeah. I'm learning so much from everything from y'all. I'm like, girl, I'm Listen, just we're learning from you. We're learning today too. We're all learning stuff. Iceland is number one. Oh, yep. actually, Iceland is actually like she said. U.S. is 132. No, oh, see, yeah. I was give, I was being nice. I said 120. It dropped. It's, it's even lower. So wow. you guys, there's 131 countries more peaceful than the U.S. I'm gonna make oh. a video about this. Thank you for this, Kyle. <laughs> Kyle, give like me you, content. Let's get yes, it. <laughs> yes, I was like, literally, you guys have no, no. Don't worry. Just don't go to the other. 30 plus countries below. Just stick to the first 131. You're good. I'm here for it. Yeah. 
All right, let me see. Can I have the next? Oh, hi, Chewy. Come here. Come here. Can I have the next question, please? Here's my little. What advice um, would you give those wanting to live this lifestyle? Yes, ATL girl, we are always here for learning something new every day. Yeah. Um. So, Kyla, what advice would you give someone wanting to live this lifestyle? Hey, baby. This oh, good question. Um, I would say find your number, like the number of how much you find out how much you spend each month living in the U.S. And then find out approximately how much you would be spending in a month overseas. And I think you'd be shocked, the difference. Yeah. And I say that because we live on $4,000 a month. I don't know how many people in the U.S. are living on $4,000 a month for yeah. two people. And we, I definitely didn't, I think, living single. You know, so like we're talking two people here. So that's number one is figure out your number. Number two is... Oh, what was it? How would you, what advice would you give people wanting to do this lifestyle? Definitely f figure out your number. And number two, I say, try it. Like you never really know until you try, because what we mm -hmm. keep saying, like the recurring theme is, you know what the U.S. is like. You know how to, you know what neighborhood you want to live in. If you need to go back to the U.S., you know how, you know how to get a job fast. Like it may not necessarily be the job that you want, but like if someone said you need to get a job in two weeks, like, you could get a job in two weeks and then make it work. You have connections in the U.S., so I say try it. Um, and if you don't like it, you can always come back to the U.S. If, if you're three months in and you're like, I freaking hate it because there's people that this may not be for them. But, yeah, that's my advice. Um, and my last advice is for people wanting this lifestyle is I'm, I'm going to plug <laughs> your master class because people have Aww. already – done it and people have already given you the steps it's not like like 20 years ago there was no info out there like there's already a blueprint Ooh, out there yes. for you to at least begin to follow but that would be those would be my steps and my advice i love all of those <laughs> so what would be your advice honestly y'all i would just say everything is figure outable Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all have read that book. Um, it's by a woman named Marie Forleo, which is funny because I used to like watch so much of her videos. I never watch her videos anymore. And funny enough, I watched one of her videos this morning. So I didn't even know I was, I don't even know how that happened. But that honestly would be my biggest piece of advice because I talk to so many people and I actually get really triggered whenever people say things like, oh, you're so lucky and oh, you're living my dream and I have to try to not choose violence because I'm like, oh, yeah, you think I was so lucky growing up as a black woman in the South in the yep. United States? I'm yep. so lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. this was handed to me. They like, stop. Um, everything is figure outable. Like you, mm -hmm. um, as you, the U.S. will still be here. Can't wait to start reading the masterclass info. Yes, ATL. That masterclass okay. is that masterclass is dope. I'm I'm so excited for you. Um, but yeah, y'all, yeah, if baby. you if you really want it, you can figure it out. Like Kyla said, like there's so many resources out there right now. My friend Suzanne always says there's no excuse to be stupid in 2024. Yep. You got Google University, you got YouTube University, you got TikTok. Yep. Like yep. if you're not. If you're not doing something that you truly want to do, you are the only person who is holding you back. Like I can give you all the travel hacks in the world, but none of it matters if you do not, if you don't decide that you're serious about living a different life. So honestly, my only piece of advice is knowing that everything is figure outable. That's all that's, I, I mean, because that. everything else is just like, it all falls in that category to yep. me. Yeah. I love that. I agree. I was like, you can figure everything out. And I, I love the, there's no reason to be stupid <laughs> in 2024. It's so true. It's like so if true. you don't know how to do something, I, we didn't know how to open the gas, gas tank in our car. Cause you know, like rent, rent yeah. this car is a, by the way, the Ford is now we have a Ford escape. There is a button on the little panel. We got on YouTube to figure out how to open the button. So there is no excuse. Um, YouTube for University. Yep. Don't act like YouTube haven't saved y'all life when you went to Literally. somebody's house and that toilet didn't flush. Yep. And you just go <laughs> Don't act like YouTube has not saved your life when you thought you bought something and you thought you were about to be a handyman and you were yep. like, what the hell was I thinking? Yep. Like, 
That's yeah, there's the the information is there. Like we are in yep. the age of information. Mm -hmm. If you you just you have to be willing to take the leap and trust that that parachute is going to come whenever whenever it's time for it to come. Like yep. you just that's it. Oh, I love that. I love that because it's so so true. So we figuring out. Oh, I actually have a follow up question. Um, how do you figure out your next destination? There is no answer for that. <laughs> there is none. Like it just that we have we have like no plan. Like we well, that's not true. Earlier this year, we had certain countries in mind. When we first left the US, mm -hmm. we knew Brazil, Vietnam, Thailand, Bali, Japan. I'm missing one. No, I'm not. No, yeah, we knew like, we knew that those were the ones we were going to do. And then we also knew that the second half of the year was going to be flexible. So honestly, I guess the answer to that is being flexible. That's how mm -hmm. we know our next plan. Like we take so many things into account, weather, holidays, you know, if we're trying to go back home anytime soon, if there, if we already have something in mind, like I told you earlier, we've been planning South Africa in December since like February. Like mm -hmm. even though we didn't know what we were going to be at in July, we knew we were planning South Africa for December. So <laughs> there is no, the, the one answer, honestly, is just being flexible um, oh, and just kind of going where the wind blows us. So, yeah. There's a flight attendant named Stella on all the platforms, and she says, yeah, be a palm tree. You just kind of, because y'all see the palm trees in the storms. Everything blows away, but that palm tree is still there. Yeah. You got to go with the flow. I love yep. that. I love that. I love this for both of you. Everything is figure outable. That's been my whole life. Yeah, yes. I feel like it kind of has, like, I think people who do this, it is their whole life. <laughs> like, we kind of were, this life or this mindset has always kind of been there. But it just, um, it just came out, you know, uh, I don't know where I'm going with that, but you got what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. I'm right there. How many more questions? How many more we got? Two more? Two more questions? Let's do it. Okay. Yes, we are ready for the next one. And if anyone else has any questions in the chat, feel free to let us know. Because I was like, we are we are hard and fast on these questions. Are I'm you going laughing. In or out? I'm laughing at this question. What's a travel mistake you've made? Ooh. How much time? Are you <laughs> Alex, oh my gosh. Oh That's man, I have made many, but I think I know the one I'm gonna pick. Do you want to go first, Kyla? Yes, because it happened yesterday, you guys. Oh, thank you, Indica. I'm so glad that you're enjoying ah. the live. Sorry, Carla. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I was like, oh, was like, thanks so much for joining, you guys. I made this mistake yesterday, and I was so sad. So uh, New Zealand is known for the movie Lord of the Rings, the trilogy, and it's been filmed all over the country. Um, so the animation studio is here in... Uh, in, the in the city where we're in, in Wellington. And so I booked us uh, tickets to go to the workshops, like this whole tour. And you have to book it ahead of time because you know everybody like, comes here for Lord of the Rings. I booked you guys for the wrong day. Oh. I booked the wrong day. And it's funny because we were already running late yesterday. We had like a one o'clock time. So like we're rushing. We're like, go park the car and then you get out and and go tell them we're coming, right? Like all this stuff. But we finally decided, you know, we're just both gonna park and we'll walk there together, which worked out because we both got our face cracked together versus <laughs> one person. So yeah, we are 18 hours ahead of central time. And I booked the tickets for October 8th, thinking October 8th is yeah, two days ago or three days yeah. ago, forgetting that we're a day ahead. So, Kyla, so what time is it for you right now? It's 12.38 on Thursday p.m. Holy moly. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, so it's Thursday, I guess, yeah, Thursday afternoon. The sun is shining. Like, wow. it's, it's daytime here. And I'm going and to bed in three hours. <laughs> and you're, I was like, and it's Wednesday night for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Barely even night, like Wednesday evening. So. Evening. Yeah. It's what, like 6.30 now? In Central Time, it's 6, 6.39, yeah. 6.39, yeah. So it's, like I said, that was our biggest, my most recent mistake because I was very upset 
I was already frustrated that we were late, but like yeah, not only we were just we were late because it was the day before. So we had already missed our tickets regardless. And the girl was like, well, do you want to talk to the supervisor? And I think she had that because she thought, you know, maybe because I'm black, I'm about to blow up. But like, I was so disappointed <laughs> in myself, right? I was just like, I was like, I can't believe I did that. Like, I was like, no, yeah. like, what's the supervisor going to do? The tickets were for yesterday. And I'm not going to book it again because I don't want to pay double for the excursion. So yeah. I just, it's fine, you guys. I just lost out loss. on like a hundred bucks. Man, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you, you take a loss with travel. You really do. Here, how you, did you? What's Biograd? So far from the U.S. Oh, being how, so far? Um, how did you work through the fear of being so far away from home? Yeah, I think that is being. That makes sense. I will be very honest. I don't have that fear. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, <laughs> honestly, like I, because that's one of the beautiful things about travel is travel teaches you that the world is huge, but the world is also small. And when you start traveling and you recognize that just like you go to book a flight and you put it in Miami or Atlanta or, you know, Texas or whatever, you could also put in New Zealand or Bangkok or Colombia, and it shows you that the world is bigger than you think and the world is smaller than you think. So me personally, it's not a fear I've had to get over. Yeah, no, I love that. That was a great question. That was a really good question. Yeah. I would also say, kind of going back to, I don't, there's no fear because you know what you can come back to. Yeah. Like, you know, the U.S. is there. It's like, oh, my gosh, if I leave the U.S., like, they're not going to deny my passport stamp back in the U.S. <laughs> right. <laughs> they'll always exactly. Let you, yeah, they'll always let you back in. And so that that's, that's getting, you know, that's the fear. I think, like I said, my fear was coming back. <laughs> coming back and, and, and being in a lifestyle that would be, that I would not like. A lot yeah. of people have that fear, though. Lots of people do have that fear, though. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. if you do have that fear, I would say start small. I talked about this mm -hmm. whenever I was live yesterday in terms of solo travel. And I said how a friend of mine, her first solo trip was to Texas from mm -hmm. North Carolina. So I think you can always baby step it, right? Like, and I don't know, and obviously like far is relative, right? But go to the next town over, book mm -hmm. a flight. Yeah, I literally, someone asked me a few nights ago, like, what would you say to someone who's kind of anxious? Oh, where would you suggest someone go up here anxious? I literally, I said Mexico. I said, mm -hmm. it's, I said it's a quick flight. Yep. It's very, Mexico, a lot of places in Mexico are, is very Americanized. So you're not gonna mm -hmm. have a ton of culture shock. And one thing I always say is, you know, start where you are. Like you can start, you can start small. Yep, I love that. I agree. Where did my husband go? I thought he was about to cook dinner and then he just left the apartment. <laughs> he did walk past you. We did see I you. Thought, I thought he was about to go cook and he done left the apartment. Oh, uh, like, maybe we're going to get some ingredients. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I wonder, he was, I don't know. One thing that we have noticed is like in some countries, like the meat doesn't last as long when you buy it. And so like I did oh. buy this chicken like three days ago. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like something smells kind of funny. And I wonder if it's that chicken. And I wonder if he's not going to replace the chicken. I be telling him he can talk to me when I'm on live. I'm like, no, you don't got, I'm like, you don't got to sneak. And ain't nobody going to be like, you can't talk to your husband. He's like, like crawling yeah, underneath. Like, he, he just always <laughs> wants to be just like out of the way off the camera. But yeah. I'm assuming he went to go get some food. We'll see. I want to go to Thailand eventually. Indica, Th Thailand isn't going anywhere either. Mm -hmm. You know, start with start with Mexico. My first, no, the first time I traveled, well, outside of like when I traveled for my job was cruises, Jamaica, Grand Cayman, mm -hmm. like I, I, Mexico. Like I started, that's exactly where I started. So yeah, it's like decompression when I'm out of the country, recompressed when I get back. That's how I, I feel. feel it. I'm scared, ATL girl. I'm scared to come back. Don't be scared, it. Kyla. It'll oh. be, as of right now, I'll tell you, because, you know, I visited the States in July. Mm -hmm. Whenever I first, whenever we first started talking about going back, I was like, ugh. But then, <laughs> like, honestly, as time went on, I started getting excited because at the end of the day, humans, like, we do love familiarity. Mm -hmm. And there's so many things, like, like, I mean, just getting back in my RAV4, I was like, 
I was like, oh my God. And, and yeah. imagine, I don't even miss driving. Like, I don't feel mm -hmm. like I miss driving. But then whenever I realized I was going to get to drive my car again, I was like, oh my God. And then knowing <laughs> that I was going to go in a grocery store and like yep. know the language and know like be stuff. able. Yep. Wait, hold on. I need, I need to ask a stupid question. What language do they speak in New Zealand? Is it English? Yeah. So uh, okay. New Zealand was colonized by the British. So we, uh, we, they speak English, but they also use Maori, like the local the native, like how we have Native Americans in the U.S., they have the native people here. So the signs will be in English and Maori. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually just thought about that. Home is home, warts and all. It is, all. it's, it's yep. true. So yeah, don't <laughs> don't be scared, Kyla. Like I think, and I'll be curious to know. Let me know whenever you do get closer oh. to that time because it will be it will be mixed feelings. I was a ball. I think I had every emotion on the spectrum and like that week <laughs> and like the three days from like going home to like the three days of me being home. Like it was like, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's weird and crazy how mm -hmm. easy it is to fall right back into your routine. And you kind of start mm -hmm. being like, wait a minute, was I actually in Asia three days ago? Yeah, like that, yeah. it's like, yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll get there. <gasps> Y'all, okay. I'll let y'all know, because, like, our visa is up next June, but we don't want to go back next summer. So you're not even going back to visit. You're literally going to be abroad for a full year. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's God, really God forbid nothing happened, but, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the plan. Yeah. Okay. Is to just be gone for a full year. Right. Okay. Fine. Cool. Let me, yeah. um, sorry, let me go back to the question. Um, What was the question? The question was, oh, yeah, what's the travel mistake that you have made? Ah, I honestly would say the biggest travel mistake I've made is not doing enough research ahead of time. Oh. Um, and I will also say that for some people, that's not that big of a deal. I think it depends on the kind of person you are, but there have been too many things that crept up on us this year. That was our fault. Like mm -hmm. the hot mess express situation of the visa with Vietnam. Kyla, please tell me that you've already started working on that. Yeah, and I've already got denied once, and so I've already, I'll, we'll have to talk offline because I've gotten denied once you guys on my visa Girl. from Vietnam, and so I changed my name so that, so hopefully. <laughs> Not you changed your name. Or I didn't change my name, but they told me my name was incorrect. They said so the I, same thing for So Girl. I added my middle name, and so I think that will help, but we'll see. You, I'm very glad that you're working this out in advance. I, I really yeah. am. Um, yeah, I would say my biggest travel mistake, like I said, not doing enough research. Look, visas, budgets, budgets. and um, baggage, baggage mm -hmm. requirements. I will say, do your research be mm -hmm. minimum 30 days before your trip, if possible. I mean, I know some people, hell, we didn't know we were going to Columbia until like the day before. So it doesn't always, <laughs> it doesn't always work out that way, but I know most people like they plan further in advance. Do your research. I would say yeah. my biggest mistake is not doing enough research in advance. I would, I would, say, I would agree. Well, is there a country though that you were like, oh, you said Colombia, but Colombia was a country where like you didn't do enough research about the country? Or, no, like, I just meant that Colombia, whenever I was saying do your research at least 30 days in advance, I was saying, I know that's not always possible. Like for mm -hmm. us, we thought we were going to be in, we thought we were going to be in Panama until September like 14th. And we mm -hmm. left on the 8th. So we ended up leaving like a whole week early. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just mean like, I know, and, and as far in advance as you can, look, do That's your fair. research. That's fair. I would agree to that. Cause yeah, we, I, my luggage is overweight when I left the States, you guys. I left the US with stuff in his bag. <laughs> Same. So Same. I'm like, oh, is, is that much overweight? Like, oh, yeah. so yeah. Same. We try. We we Because here's the thing. We carry the stuff that they don't think about. Also, we also we have stuff that they don't use. Like, me, I mean, that, you go, girl, don't even get me started. Don't, I'm not, <laughs> that is true. Just, I would know, agree. To, you know, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. So I would agree to that as well. Should we? Could you post the next question? Is this the, the last final one? question? Thank you. This is Thank the final you, question. Alex. You oh, Alex was ready. He is. He's sitting on the bar in there, and he's like on it. On he's got it. What's Thank next you. for you and your partner? Ooh, good question. South Africa. That's right. Yep. What made y'all decide South Africa? Actually, that's what I meant to ask. For I think I remember, but for the group, for the for the yeah. 
Yeah, so some of you who've been following me for a while, you've probably heard me talk about Remote Year, which is a group travel, like a work travel, digital nomad type of company. Um, that's who I traveled with back in 2019 when I lived abroad for four months. So the first two months of our travels, we traveled with Remote Year. Um, Remote Year, they have like a whole list of different cities they go to. Cape Town, South Africa is on that list, and it's always been one of their most popular destinations. So I actually was planning to go to Cape Town in 2020. You know what happened. You don't need me to tell you. So um, fast forward to this year that we are traveling and we're having this year where we are really, truly going like all over the globe. Wow. Um, I'm just I'm recircling it back um, in terms of Cape Town and some people that we met up with in Brazil in remote year. Like a lot of us were talking about meeting up again in December oh. in Cape Town. So, yeah, hoping to see some familiar faces there as well. Nice. Will you be staying with remote year or are you staying outside of it? We're undecided, honestly. Mm -hmm. Before, we were pretty sure we were going to do a remote year, but we've talked to a lot of travelers, and a lot of people say that we don't need to do a full month in Cape Town. Mm. We're, we're very back and forth right now because there's this whole thing of you don't need to, but there's also this whole thing of we're kind of tired of moving places. So, like, you know this, right? Like, four yep, weeks yep. sounds like a long time, but it goes by really quickly so right yep. now we are undecided but we do know that we want to that we're going to visit um joburg cape town and um Durban, i think is the yeah. yeah yeah but we don't we don't we don't have any itinerary yet i love that you guys cape town is on the list i've been wanting to go for over 10 years so i can't wait for y'all's trip because it's it's it is and it's so funny like when you start traveling you're just the, the list gets bigger like yeah, it does. Wanna, it does. You, you always want to go somewhere new, and so you I, have, you have to push down the FOMO. Yeah, that, that kind of thing, you have to be like, sit down, sit down. Like you're already here. Like I'm all the way on the other side of the world, and I'm over here. Like, but she's going to South Africa. I yeah. want to go to South Africa. Girl, you're over here talking about you're going to Vietnam, and I'm like, fuck. She's about to get in that good ass fuck. <laughs> Oh I my. want some. Me and my so husband bad. will look at photos on our phone of fuck and be like, really, Dream. like. I want it and I and I do I I like I always there's always this list this ever-growing list and as you keep traveling you'll know, keep adding places and Vietnam for us I don't know if I said this um was not on our list but we had an interview we did a, a podcast episode with this other couple Doc and Bean by the way they're they're great so, uh, great couple, full time black couple, full time or uh, travelers. They live in Orlando, but anyway, um, and they were hyping up Vietnam, and I was like, okay, Alex, I think we need to book a trip. And literally a week later, we booked our flights to Vietnam. So uh -huh. I, I was like, I have no, I have a couple of hotels and a couple Airbnbs booked, but we don't have any really solid plan. And recently found out that you can scuba dive in vietnam oh and it's God. like one of the cheapest places in the world to learn yeah yeah so we might be scuba certified we'll see. that's gonna be <laughs> so phenomenal yeah and then we'll be able to scuba dive in south africa because oh i don't know if you can scuba in south i know there's I a lot know. of sharks in the water i'll look into that but yeah but that's what's next for us is vietnam <laughs> yeah both i mean Either way, all, all incredible experiences mm -hmm. just overall. Um, and these were great questions. Thank you for of thank course. you for putting this list together, Kyla. Of course, and of course. Thank you again of for course. going live. This definitely this can't be our last one. We definitely have to do yeah, yeah. Um, we definitely have to do some more of these, but yeah, great questions. I loved answering all of these. It's been cool, like learning more about each other, I think. Mm, I agree. Um, and just also like trading like travel tips. Like I, I feel like I truly have learned from you on this live. Like I'm, I'm so Thank excited you. about this cruise, girl. I'm like, <laughs> I am definitely <laughs> looking into that 100%. I am glad, like, so I'm glad we connected and this definitely went up. I feel like we have to do like a relationship series because apparently we have this not wealth of knowledge thank you both next, next to me is going to be chosen let's yes. get it atl girl <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm, okay. thank you for joining so thank you for all the likes all the love also yes. all the support thank you all y'all for tuning in um we at, obviously you can see we love talking travel yes. and answering <laughs> answering your questions so yeah we appreciate it bye you guys i'm gonna yeah, hop off Ella, enjoy your 
Thursday. It's already Thursday for you. Enjoy yes. the rest of your Thursday in New Zealand. Everyone else, more than likely, good night, good evening, all of that. And we'll catch y'all next time. Kyla, is she gone? Okay, maybe she was. Okay, so she's paused. I don't know if she's coming back, but okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. See y'all next time.